I chase projects primarily based on what kind of a challenge it's going to give me and I'm a compositor so what that means is I'm putting all the layers together I'm getting assets either from on set they're plate photography or it's elements that have been rendered or just also other tank elements like they may go and shoot water explosions or fire and I have to seamlessly integrate all those layers right and that's the first challenge but the challenge that really excites me is just more look development and stylization look development hmm. That, I mean, I'm it, still working on my look. Yeah, keep my working. Looks not. Yeah, come on. Yeah, how do you? Well, I don't feel well today. <laughs> yeah, keep working. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It doesn't look in development. <laughs> Talk um, about look development. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, like a practical example would be projects like 300 or Tron, right. where it's not just getting them into the same world, but it's also getting that shot into the style and the mood of how the film is set. So Tron is driven by tons of different types of lens flares. Mm -hmm. You'll see when a different disc will go on or bike will go on, they'll, they'll each have their own unique style of a flare. And it's that kind of development. Chris also told us that he fulfilled one of his dreams by working on Peter Jackson's Hobbit films. You just worked on The Hobbit. Yeah. And when you're still working on The Hobbit, because you're working on the third film, did you work I'm on the- I'm hoping to, yeah. Uh, did you work on the first Hobbit movie and the second one? Yeah, definitely always been a dream of mine. If that franchise came to life, I got to work on it. I went down for the first one, got to work with uh, amazing people, was there for maybe seven months or so, got to do some pretty cool look development near the end of the movie, like the fire and yeah. uh, the eagles. Yeah. I worked on a lot of that and just some other moments when they're on the character at the very end, with kind of emotional palette. And, and then, yeah, I came back down for the second one, and I'm hoping to finish what I started. One of Chris's other projects is assisting with the Spark Forward Festival, which celebrates visual effects in all its forms. What's happening with Spark? Why, why should people go? And anybody can go to this thing. It's a <laughs> Vancouver-based yep. event. Yeah, it's a really cool conference. It's five days, and I guess you could break it up into three things. It's film festival, totally open to everybody. Yep. And they're going to be presenting classics and, and present movies right. with the latest projectors, Christie and the Stereo 3D. So you're going to be able to go see Wizard of Oz 3D and the greatest projector you could see it in. So That's incredible. And that's going to be going through the whole festival. And then there's a job fair. So if you want to get into visual effects. So if you go to uh, the job fair, you'll, you'll work on Game of Thrones and then The Hobbit. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, that's, yeah. that's all you got to do. And then, and then the bigger part of that are the lectures. And that's pretty much the top people in our industry showing the latest advancements in visual effects. There's going to be ILM, Weta's coming, and there's two other interesting talks that I'm really excited about. One is the guy who owns the rights to Batman. Oh, it's Michael Uslan. I'm going to that. Yeah, yeah. go to that. That's cool. Yeah. So he's going to talk about that history. I think he'll be right up I, I will be there. Executive producer, yeah. yeah. So that's really neat. Uh, and then the other is the 20th anniversary of Jurassic Park. Yeah.